Hey yo, L A Z, A K A Z man, A K A Z Lord. You heard? The hardest working man on YouTube. You know I be putting that work in extra. I told y'all I was dropping two good episodes for Halloween. You heard? I've been editing all weekend long. Now I mean, this one right here is a movie. You heard? It's about how I got caught up in a crazy robbery in Queens years and years back. You heard? Stay tuned. Comment, gang. I need y'all to get busy on this Slim Blunt gang. You already know we on deck with it. Now I mean, I need y'all to share this to Facebook. Tweet this out. You feel what I'm saying? Send this to your homie in a text message and let it be known. LAZ dropped another movie and that's a fact. You heard? Gen Pop, we in the build on. Like I said, man. My rap game runs deep. It's a lot of lost stories and history about what I experienced trying to get on in a rap game, being on the underground. You feel what I'm saying? I was in every hood doing this music thing. I'm known throughout the whole New York City with this music thing. You feel what I'm saying? All your favorite rappers, they know who I be. You heard? They just was fronting a long time. The fronting is over though. Y'all know who Z-Boy be, not me, but yo. So when the bus got past us, three niggas just popped out with scream masks and was coming across the street. One nigga had the tech and two of them niggas had even nines or four fifths, right? girl in Woodside, Queens, thought he was low. Played the crib for a month, then dead at his P.O. You heard? Anytime I hear Woodside, that's what I think about that Nas line, you heard? And that's a fact. But yo, it's Halloween. I told you I was gonna drop two stories for Halloween. This one is a scary one. You heard? So check it, right? This is about how we did a video in Woodside Projects in Queens and niggas stuck up the whole video shoot. You heard? Niggas threw down the whole video shoot right in this projects right here, Woodside. And that's a fact. Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. Let me give you the details. Check it right, the bro Big Lito. B Big Lito is a rapper from out of Queens and he used to live in Woodside Projects. You feel what I'm saying? And um, basically, this was during the era when, you know, I was tearing Hot 97 up. I was tearing K-Slay up. I was on every K-Slay show. You feel what I'm saying? I had the video out with K-Slay. I had the video out with Kiss. And I was doing heavy numbers in the streets on the underground rap scene. So I was doing a lot of business in the rap game with dudes for collabs. Now I mean, a lot of dudes used to pay me. To, a lot of dudes used to pay me to do collabs and do promotion for them and get their song on K-Slay or get them featured on K-Slay or, I mean, on major mixtapes or whatever. I was the plug for all that underground promo. You feel me? So a dude like Big Lee, though, Big Lito was a type of dude, you know, son was getting money in the streets, you feel what I'm saying? And, you know, um, son was putting up that bread for that promo. See, a lot of dudes be in the rap game, and, you know, a dude may be the nicest rapper on the planet Earth, but he the type of dude that never spent a dollar on his promo. You feel what I'm saying? Like, Big Lito was the type, whatever money he was getting his hands on, he was trying to put it back into his rap grind, you feel what I'm saying? Which is the smart thing to do. So son was putting in heavy bread in promo, getting his cell phone, anything he could get his cell phone. We had a little single together that was on K Slay called Lockout. You feel what I'm saying? That was banging. Now, I mean, I don't remember the exact years, but I, I, I put the years if I find out when I edit this. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to the whole Woodside. Shout out to Queens. You feel what I'm saying? So boom. Like I said, me and Lito used to do mad business, mad money business. Son used to be putting bread in my hands for promo and all type of shit. Now I mean, so one day the nigga Lito, he had a he had a motherfucking uh he wanted to do a video for a big song that he had. He wanted to do a big video for a big song that he had, right? 
So he hits me up like, yo, man, I mean, I'm doing this video. I want you to play a part in the video. You feel what I'm saying? We're going to do the shit in Woodside, blah, 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 this and that and this. So we worked out some business. He like, yo, I'm going to hit you with some bread. Now I mean, because I'm going to need your time for some hours. And then we're going to try to push this joint. Boom, boom, boom. I said, I right, bet. So basically, also at this time, I had a crazy, wild, elaborate twin tower ring. You heard one day I just got an idea. I said, damn, what if I got a two finger ring in the shape of the Twin Towers? You heard? And real talk, of course, I'm in the hood and the project's broke. I ain't got no goddamn money to get a Twin Towers ring made out of diamonds and gold. That'd be about $50,000 to make a ring like that. So I had to improvise. You heard, I found a jeweler and I had him instead do the ring in stainless steel and sapphires. You heard, and I said, man, when I get my money up, I'm gonna get this shit done with diamonds and gold. But for now, I gotta get this shit done with stainless steel and sapphires because I gotta seal the deal on this idea before anybody thinks about that shit. You understand what I'm saying? Once dudes see the ring, period, they'll know that's my idea and they'll leave that shit alone. So. I got the ring design and the ring still cost me over three thousand dollars three thousand dollars and change because i'm because i was paying not just for the materials stainless steel and sapphire is, is not a lot of money but the craftsmanship the time and the work hours to design that jewelry that's what i was really paying for you feel what i'm saying that's what i was really paying for so basically um, I got that Twin Towers ring. I was that nigga. I had that shit on in the video with Kiss, all of that. You know, motherfuckers was out here actually believing that shit was real gold and diamonds. My nigga, I'm in the projects. Where the fuck I get all of that money to make a fucking ring like that? Of course that shit was stainless steel and sapphires and shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? And, you know, niggas confront if they want to, but it's a whole lot of motherfucking rappers out there that on war jewelry that's not, that wasn't real gold and diamonds, my nigga. Sometimes you got to keep that image up no matter what. You feel what I'm saying? It's a part of the rap game. It's a uniform. It's a damn shame, but when you a motherfucking rapper, you ain't got nothing hanging from your neck, blinging. Ain't nobody listening to what the fuck you got to say. You understand what I'm saying? It's a goddamn shame, but that's the way the game is. If you ain't motherfucking... If you ain't spitting with about, if you ain't spitting with what's looking like a couple of hundred thousand hanging from your neck, nobody ain't even trying to hear your bars, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you something. That fake jewelry, that shit is just as dangerous as real jewelry. You feel what I'm saying? And when you rocking it on your neck and you out here in these streets with fake shit on, that's, that's blinging. You got bullshit ass ten dollar shit and then you got shit that's done by real jewelers that take real time and craftsmanship is just not real gold and diamonds you feel what i'm saying and you will be surprised how many of your favorite rappers is running around with shit that is not real my nigga it still costs a little bit of money for the craftsmanship time and the materials but it ain't real gold and diamonds niggas is out here hustling and it's part of the hustle and i ain't mad at it I understand the game and I understand the uniform and I understand the hustle of the rap game. You feel what I'm saying? But like I said, that fake shit is just as dangerous as the real shit. Now, I mean, I done had all type of real jewelry. You feel what I'm saying? I done had all type of real jewelry and then I done had shit that I got just for the rap game, for the looks of the rap game. And this Twin Towers ring was one of them and it was an ill hustle. And I had everybody talking about my ring and loving it. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the hustle and that was the hustle behind it. But anyway, Big Leto, Big Leto was out of control with the jewelry. I don't know what was fake, what was real, I don't know. You feel what I'm saying? But I know he was running around with all type of jewelry on his neck. All through New York City, all type of chains, rings, wild shit. And the bottom line is, like I said, motherfuckers out here don't know the difference. The average nigga out here don't know the difference between what's real and what's fake. And a motherfucker will kill you and book you and risk his life and his freedom for your shit regardless. You feel what I'm saying? So the decisions you make, you gotta be wise. So anyway, I come out here to do the video with niggas. 
It's a thousand niggas out here. You feel what I'm saying? A thousand niggas out here. I got on the Twin Tower ring, right? A big ass silver and, and, and cubic zirconia, big ass motherfucking chain that literally in real life, if that chain was real, that shit would cost like $200,000. You feel what I'm saying? The way that shit look, if it was made from real diamonds and real gold, that shit would cost about 200 racks, and that's a fact. So I'm sitting around with some shit on like that to match my twin tower ring that's blinging bananas because sapphires, that's the secret. Sapphires, you can't, a, jewel, a person can't look at a sapphire and tell if it's a sapphire or a diamond. A sapphire blings crazy. So I had the white and black sapphires in my shit. You understand what I'm saying? And I had this big ass, this big ass bullshit um, tennis chain, but it was a high quality bullshit tennis chain. You got some tennis chains, them shits $20 on Amazon. Those ain't it. But the shit that I had was from a real jewelry store and a real jeweler. They just in the hood trying to make money. So they gonna put the shit in the jewelry store that nigga, that they know niggas can afford. So that's what majority of niggas be fucking with. So I got this big, stupid $200,000 looking tennis chain on with this big, dumb Twin Towers ring that's bananas that nobody ever saw. And I come out to Woodside Projects, me and the nigga OP, the nigga Hangman, right? Hangman got two big boogers in his ear. All right, firstly, I got on a Twin Tower ring, the bullshit chain, right? Then I got on another pinky ring, big, nice, brolic, icy pinky ring that is real that I bought gold and diamonds, brolic shit. You feel what I'm saying? That's on my pinky. And the nigga Lee, though, me and him had did business for me acting in his video. So I had about six, $700 in cash in my pocket that I got from the nigga Lee, though. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm we doing the video, we doing the scenes, we acting out the scenes. I got the motherfucking, um, I got all this jewelry on, the six, seven hundred dollars in my pocket, plus my own money that I had, which was a few hundred dollars. So I probably got like eight hundred, nine hundred dollars in my pocket, right? You understand what I'm saying? The, the the tennis chain, the twin tower ring, my real ring, you feel me? And that's about it, right? So we out there filming for hours, my nigga. And, and after a couple of hours, my instinct said, yo, bounce, time to go, right? This is why you always listen to your fucking instincts in your gut. My instinct said, all right, you've been out here for long enough. It's time to roll. You feel me? So I'm like, yo, Lito, I'm out, my nigga. Now, I mean, I'm about to bounce now. Before I told this nigga I was about to bounce, it was another nigga who I knew through Lito that kept coming up to me saying, yo, lads, man, you good out here. You good out here. And I got annoyed by that. I'm like, yo, my nigga, like, of course I'm on point. Like, yo, nigga, I hope these niggas, like I said, Lito knew the whole hood, but that don't mean the whole hood liked Lito. See, this is what you gotta make you, this is what you gotta find out before you go to somebody's hood fucking with them. Cause yeah, 80% of the projects may like and fuck with that nigga that you with, but then there's another 20% that can't stand the nigga and might wanna do something to him, you, and whoever he with. You feel what I'm saying? So this is the shit you must know. Now, um, a nigga kept coming up to me that was Letho Peoples or whatever Saying, yo lads man, don't worry about it, you good, you good out here So I'm like, yeah bro, I know I'm good You feel what I'm saying? I know I'm good, you know what I mean? But it was sneaky that he kept saying that shit He kept coming over to yo lads, yo, yo, you good I'm like, yo, in my head, I'm like, why this nigga keep telling me I'm good? So eventually I told the nigga, I said, yeah bro, I know I'm good, I'm always good I'm good, I'm good anywhere I'm at You feel what I'm saying? So we, we, so we on the block. So I tell a nigga Lee Dawson, yo son, I'm kind of done, man. Now I mean, I got things I got to do. I got to bounce. He like, we got one more scene to film. And after that scene, we good. Now I mean, I said, yo bro, I got to bounce. He like, yo, please. Man. He like, yo, come on lads. We almost finished this shit here. Boom, nigga gives me a couple. Of, he, nigga gives me a couple of hundred more dollars. Yo, here, here. I'm gonna give you a couple of hundred more dollars for more of your time. I said, all right, man, fuck it. Me being greedy. Me being greedy, but not listening to my instincts. When my instincts said, yo, bounce, my nigga, you did what you came here to do. Now you've been out here for too fucking long. See, the thing is about being in the hood and shit like that, you could be in any hood. You just got a time limit. 
on that hood. You can't be lollygagging around a nigga hood for two and three hours. You might come out there for 20 minutes, chill, smoke a blunt, but you can't be motherfucking lollygagging in a nigga hood where you not from for motherfucking hours at a time. And that's what we doing with mad jewelry on. Leto had the motion on his shit crazy. You understand what I'm saying? So boom, like I said, real or fake, it don't matter in a New York City housing projects with a bunch of wolves. You understand what I'm saying? Niggas even want your fake shit. Niggas want to rob you just because you violating having your neck looking like that. You understand what I'm saying? So to go from one scene to the next, it was taking time. You feel me? Dudes had to set up cameras, lights, all type of wild shit. You feel what I'm saying? So it was a lot of sitting around, lingering around. And like I said, now I mean, New York City housing is not the place to be lingering around. Like I'm lingering around right now with a camera and a $70,000 car parked on the block. I don't learn my lesson, people. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, man. But yeah, man. The key to it is, like I said, you got to have a time on my nigga. You can't be in one spot for too long. So boom. So check it. We on the block. Now, I mean, I'm standing next to OP. Niggas is lighting up weed, talking, polying. You know, niggas know me from the music. So niggas is coming over to me. Yo, last man, you should let me get your number, man, so we could do some business, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm polying with niggas. You feel me? At the time, like I said, my name was popping a little something. So niggas was, so niggas was out here showing me some love. You feel what I'm saying? But it was all type of goons, all type of niggas started showing up. And I'm going to tell y'all niggas something else. You know, in New York City, you always hear uh, Queens is Queens is the most laid back borough and this and that. Bro, that should be lies, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? You will get robbed, shot and killed in Queens the same way you would get robbed, shot and killed in any other motherfucking borough. So don't come to New York and thinking because you and start thinking because you in Queens, you good, my nigga, because that's not what it is. You feel what I'm saying? And don't think because you never heard of the projects that you in and there's other projects more famous than that particular projects. Don't think you good, my nigga, because in every projects in New York City, you got dangerous motherfuckers out there. You feel what I'm saying? So boom, like I said, the nigga Lito hit me with a few hundred dollars extra. That shit had me sit my ass down and relax. You feel what I'm saying? So we setting up for a next shoot. We on a corner. We in a block that's between two sides of the projects. You feel what I'm saying? If my memory serves me correctly. You understand? But I know it was a street that a bus run up and down. I, I'm confused with which street it was while I'm out here right now. It was a street, though, that a bus runs up and down. So, boom. Me and OP standing next to each other. We waiting for the next scene to get set up. It's me and OP standing by ourselves. It's another group of about four or five dudes next to us. And then it's a mad group of motherfuckers, like 20 motherfuckers across the street and spread out through the block because it's a real serious video shoot. So motherfuckers is out there. You understand? So me and the nigga OP just on the block waiting for the shot to get set up. A bus starts coming by. A long ass bus, one of them stretchy ass long accordion buses started coming coming by, right? So that shit was blocking the whole side of the street where you couldn't see the whole side of the street, right? This bus, bro. So the nigga OP taps me. He like, yo, yo son, look, 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 let's bounce, let's bounce. So I look up, I see three niggas with screen masks from the movie Scream. All three of them had screen masks on. And these niggas was hiding behind the bus as the bus was going down the street. They was hiding behind the bus, right? So when the bus got past us, three niggas just popped out with screen masks and was coming across the street. One nigga had the tech and two of them niggas had even nines or four fifths, right? So boom. By the time I seen them niggas, by the time them niggas was coming across the street, it was too late. If a nigga would have just started running and scattering, it, it, it probably would have put everybody live, everybody's life in danger. So like I said, the nigga OP was like, yo son, let's run, let's run. I said, nah, 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 don't run. Don't run. You feel what I'm saying? Like, don't do, we ain't doing nothing panicky and drastic because that's how niggas get killed. You understand what I'm saying? So them niggas, by the time niggas looked up, them niggas had a drop on everybody on the corner. Like I said, all three of them had the masks from Scream on with hoodies on. Niggas like, yo, don't move, don't move. Y'all know what the fuck this is. Y'all know what the fuck this is. 
We all standing there. Everybody stood still. Niggas like, yo, you, you, stand there. Yo, don't move. Don't move, nigga, don't move. Everybody throw everything on the floor. Throw everything on the floor. Everything on the floor. So niggas start motherfucking taking shit off and throwing their phones and wallets and all of that shit on the floor, right? So the nigga Big Lito, Big Lito is in the middle of the street. You understand what I'm saying? He's standing in the middle of the street. This nigga looking like he got, this nigga looking like the, this nigga looking like Mr. T. You understand what I'm saying? With how much shit he got on. So niggas got the tech to the nigga Lito like, yo, take that shit off. Yo, Lito, take that shit off, nigga. Take all of that shit off. So the nigga Lito is like, yo, he know the niggas. You feel what I'm saying? The nigga Lito like, yo, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. He like, yo, man, take that shit off, nigga. Stop playing with me. So the nigga Lito is hesitating to take all of that shit off. He like, yo, come on, my nigga. Come on, my nigga. So he like, yo, I ain't playing with you, nigga. Take that shit off, nigga. Word the mother, ah, ah. So the nigga Lito is looking at me from across the, in the, from across the way, like, and I'm like, while the nigga looking at me, I took it like he was looking like, yo, should I, should I motherfucking, should I respect the jokes? And I'm like, I'm giving this nigga the look like, nigga, you trying to die out here? So while he gave me that look, I let that nigga see me take my chain off my neck and I put that shit on the ground like this. Boom, to get that nigga to look like, nigga, take that shit off. So son starts coming up out his shit slowly. So basically, so, you know, I take my chain off. I take the twin tower ring off and I put that shit on the ground, right? The stupid shit is, I for, the, 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 the ring that was real, the real ring, I forgot I had that shit on. You understand what I'm saying? My real pinky ring, because I don't never take that shit off. I forgot I had the motherfucking pinky ring on. You feel what I'm saying? And I forgot I had the money in my pocket, the eight, nine hundred dollars, whatever it was that was in my pocket. I forgot I had that shit in my pocket. So while I'm putting shit on the floor and everybody that's on the corner is putting shit on the floor, this nigga Lito is still basically arguing with the nigga with the tech. You feel what I'm saying? Like taking mad long to take his shit off and the nigga getting aggravated. So the nigga pulls up his mask. And shows his face like, yo, word the mother. Niggas know me out here. Niggas start giving a speech. Yo, niggas know me out here. Niggas know how I get down. Niggas coming out here filming videos in my hood without my authorization type of vibes. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So I'm sitting there. I'm like, this nigga right here. You understand what I'm saying? Like, y'all niggas got the jewelry. I got the money or whatever the fuck. Like, just bounce. Like, he like, word the mother, man. Fuck that, this, and that. Niggas coming out here filming videos. Nigga, this my hood. Niggas know how I get down. The other two niggas, they ain't take their masks off. So I'm like, this nigga took his mask off. He bugging the fuck out, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So this is the shit, right? So boom, that one of the niggas, one of the niggas with, the, with a nine or the four or five, he collecting shit from off the ground. He bending down, collecting shit from off the ground. Nigga, niggas was sitting on one of these when them niggas ran up, if I'm not mistaken. You feel what I'm saying? Like these is spread it out throughout the projects. I don't know what they are. Now I mean train vents or whatever, but dudes be sitting on them shits. You feel what I'm saying? So boom. So we standing there, my nigga. Now, mind you, these niggas, they ain't search nobody, my nigga. These niggas was bugging out. This a whole video shoot with niggas. Niggas can have all type of hammers. Niggas ain't search nobody, my nigga. So one of the niggas who was picking the shit up off the ground, he bends down to go pick up like my twin tower ring and all that shit off the ground like this. So the nigga bends down. I'm, I'm leaning against the gate like this. I'm leaning against the gate like this, right? I put the shit on the floor. The nigga comes over. The nigga bends down all the way like this to pick the stuff off the floor. Bro, all I could think about in my head is if I had a gun, these niggas ain't search nobody. If I had a gun, as soon as he would have bent down to pick the shit up, I could have just pulled the gun out, boom, hit that nigga in his head. You feel what I'm saying? And everybody would have fucking scattered. And, and, but a few motherfuckers probably would have got shot and killed after that. You understand what I'm saying? But the bottom fucking line was these niggas ain't search nobody that was at the whole video shoot for, for a hammer. So that was type reckless and sloppy. Like y'all ain't pat nobody down for hammers and y'all was turning y'all backs. They was turning their backs on niggas and, and, and ducking their head low. They was wilding out. Cause if a nigga would have had a ratchet, cause if one of us on that corner would have had a ratchet, somebody might've pulled a drastic move and one of y'all could have got murdered. You understand what I'm saying? So 
These niggas collect the shit from up off the floor. They collect whatever they collect. And the director nigga with the cameras and these niggas bugging out. Niggas robbing us. Caught a bunch of fake ass jewelry and shit like that. Nigga, the cameras that was on the block was about $10,000 in camera equipment. Nigga should have took all of that. Nigga should have took all of that, my nigga. Ran through the projects with all of that. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, nigga, that shit was 10, 12, that more than that. 10, 12,000 worth of motherfucking camera equipment. You know what I mean? So, the director, like I said, he right next to my, he right next to us. And I mean, another white nigga who was down with the direct team was next to us. You know, I felt sorry for niggas. I'm like, damn, niggas getting robbed at gunpoint, son. I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn, son. This ain't the first time I had a motherfucking gun pointed at me. I done had guns thrown in my face all my motherfucking life, nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't panic when a gun gets thrown in my face. You feel me? So boom. My nigga OP took his boogers out his ear, threw them shits on the floor. He was tight because he had some nice, brolic, real gold, real diamond boogers in his shit. He was tight. He like, damn, man. You feel what I'm saying? So boom, like I said, the main nigga who had the tech took his mask off and started giving a speech in the middle of the streets. Yo, this is my hood. I'm the king of the hood. Niggas got to come. Niggas got to holler at me and get authorization before they film a video in my hood and all this crazy shit. And I'm thinking in my head, um, I'm like, yo, word the mother. These niggas got what they came for. They supposed to get the fuck up out of here. All this extra shit. I said, if any crime was to pop up right now, if any crime, you know, any crime is the police. They try to catch crimes in progress. And if they see you with a hammer in your hand, with masks and robbing, they're going to open fire, my nigga. They, they're going to tell you, drop the gun. You don't drop it. They're going to gun you down. So in my head, I'm like, these niggas is giving a speech on a block that at, at any moment, a plain clothes, an unmarked car with any crime could come cruising down the street. And it's going to be a shootout out here. And a whole bunch of motherfuckers is going to get hit on this crowded corner. I said, these niggas is bugging. So I tell a nigga OP, while, these niggas, while this nigga's still giving a speech, I tell a nigga OP, yo, come on, man. Let's, let's light jog. You understand what I'm saying? So we did a light jog up off the scene. We got up off the scene, right? We laughing as we run into the train station or wherever we going. We laughing. We like, oh, shit, son. Niggas booked, niggas, son. And then I said, oh, shit. Yo, I got all of the money. I forgot to take the money out my pocket and I forgot to take my pinky ring off. So these niggas got the fake twin tower ring, the fake uh, $200,000 tennis chain, but they ain't get my pinky ring or the cash. I see, yo, this shit crazy, my nigga. This shit crazy. So I was fucking tight. I ain't gonna lie. You know, when you get robbed, you be fucking tight. You be traumatized. Niggas popped up through hammers. Now I mean, like you felt your life could have been over right then and there. You understand what I'm saying? You start thinking about the stupid decisions you made for being out there. Like all that shit be going through your mind. Shit be fucking with you. So I was fucking destroyed at first. And I was mad. And I wanted fucking revenge. And I wanted all of that. But you know what? After reason set in, I started saying to myself, you know, any niggas that's how first of all that shit was a lineup that shit was a lineup now i mean half the niggas that was at that video shoot knew that that shit was gonna happen you understand what i'm saying because when you think back i was thinking about how niggas faces was looking how niggas you know, it was a lot of niggas on the scene that they had funny style vibes and i knew they knew what time it was you feel me niggas was making all type of phone calls yo all right we gonna come through and like i said my instincts told me to leave and i didn't leave and this is what happens when you don't follow your gut instincts you feel what i'm saying for some money so I learned a valuable lesson from that shit. So I was mad and all of that shit. Mad at the nigga Leto. I was mad at all of that. You feel what I'm saying? But it is what the fuck it is. Because I had to say to myself, listen, if niggas is hopping out, robbing 30 niggas on the block, you feel what I'm saying? Brazenly in broad daylight, beefing and making speeches on the block. I said, yo, you know what? They robbing a lot of niggas like that. And... The streets is like a self-cleaning oven sometimes, my nigga. So sometimes you ain't got to be all mad and want revenge and try to get back at a nigga. Just let the oven clean itself, my nigga. And niggas doing stupid shit. You robbing any nigga running around just brazenly robbing anybody without knowing the history of that nigga. 
they are flirting with death on a day-to-day -day basis anyway and their time is numbered anyway they're going to either catch a million years in jail for having to kill a nigga that they robbed or they going to or they're going to get their heads pushed off you feel what i'm saying so after a while you got to start thinking about it like that like you feel me and i'm going to tell you something else about niggas who do brazen robberies a lot of times, 80% of the time, a nigga that's always doing a brazen robbery, robbing everything, moving, but oh, that nigga real, he rob everything. Son, a lot of times niggas be having a drug problem. A lot of times niggas be having a cocaine addiction. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. When you, when you, a lot of times, a lot of these thug niggas who we think is wild boys and gangsters, some of these niggas be smoking, my nigga. Some of these niggas be smoking wools, sniffing coke. I'm not saying that that's the case with these particular niggas with this robbery. I'm just saying a lot of niggas who got a crazy reputation for doing wild shit, they did wild shit because they was trying to get high, my nigga. They had a drug addiction and they was just doing anything that they could do to get that drug. You feel what I'm saying? And they and they and they and it made them look like a wild brazen nigga, but what it what it really is is a nigga had a drug problem. You feel what I'm saying? So you can't be emotional and stressed out about, you know, a nigga that got away with a little robbery. Who cares, my nigga? But let me tell you how crazy the music industry is. Like I said, at this time, I was doing my thing in the rap game, right? Let me tell you how crazy the music industry is. The, the music industry is so crazy. Niggas will start rumors and lies just for views and sensation. Like, I don't do shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? So after this robbery happened, Right? It is what it is. Niggas ain't get my money. Niggas ain't get my real jewelry. Niggas caught some fake shit. I took no losses, my nigga. I lost my phone. That's the shit that's stupid. I don't know why I put my phone down. I lost my phone. My shit locked. Ain't nobody getting in that shit. That was just dumb. You feel what I'm saying? And if you robbing motherfuckers, don't take nobody's phone, my nigga. Because that's how you really go down with the location of the phone. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, man. So, um, so yeah, so after the robbery was over, you feel what I'm saying? Um, one of the directors that was directing the video, who when we got robbed, like I said, I was cool as a cucumber, nigga, cause I'm from Brownsville. Niggas done threw texts in my face when I was 11, 12. Like this shit ain't nothing new to me. You feel what I'm saying? But the, one of the directors who was there, I could visibly see that he was visibly shooken up and scared um, when this situation took place And like I said That's why I felt bad I'm like damn man Niggas robbing these Professional ass director niggas That's just trying to You know Make a living and shit I said that's fucked up But one of these niggas Had a website Or some shit right And this nigga starts I go on a nigga website And the nigga was telling about Talking about the robbery And the nigga was describing The robbery Like St. Laz was running he ran and he was scared and huh nigga my son said yo let's run i said don't run them niggas come in here for the money they ain't coming to kill nothing you understand what i'm saying it's a jokes they ain't trying to shoot and kill niggas they trying to rob niggas you feel what i'm saying son i was chilling son this nigga goes online and said because i'm a rapper you feel me because i was the biggest name rapper there probably at the time you feel what i'm saying because i'm a rapper nigga says Oh, St. Laz was running down the block scared. I said, what? So then, then because of that video he put out talking about the robbery, some dirty smoker nigga tried to put out a diss song or a video dissing me, talking about, yeah, Laz, that's why you got robbed and you was running, blah, 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 you was scared. Son, the shit was totally false, my nigga. The whole story was totally false. I was so fucking tight, smoke was coming out my ears. Nigga, I hit that nigga up. I said, listen, my nigga. I'm going to give you 60 minutes. Like the television series. To take my fucking name off your motherfucking website, nigga. Or when I see you. There will be no form of dialogue, nigga. Period, nigga. The fuck you talking about? Laz was running down the block scared. Nigga, you was scared to fucking death, nigga. I'm from Howard Projects, nigga. I ain't, I ain't, I'm used to guns, nigga. I'm used to armed robberies, nigga. That shit new to you. That shit ain't new to me, nigga. 
So what you talking about, nigga ran up off the blocks. Nigga, you was scared to death and ran and left everything. You understand what I'm saying? So I told that nigga, I said, son, I don't know who the fuck you think I am, but take my motherfucking name off your motherfucking website, nigga. So that nigga took that shit down and he apologized. And I was just amazed at the story. Like, that's not how the story went, my nigga. What the fuck are you talking about? Them niggas ain't the robbery niggas. They never even touched me. They never came up to me. Them niggas ain't know me. They just collect this shit off the ground, my nigga. Ain't not one of them niggas coming to me and say, yeah, you too, light-skinned ass nigga, take that shit off. None of that, son. None of that, son. Because Leto was the nigga who had all the shit on. So they really came for Leto. You understand what I'm saying? And they really came. Now, let's really get this real. Let's, let's, let's get to the real bottom root of this shit. Sometimes, my nigga, niggas just get robbed and robbed motherfuckers out of hatred, my nigga, out of jealousy. It don't be having nothing to do with money. It don't be having nothing to do with nothing else, no beef. It, niggas just be mad that you filming a video in their hood and they are not included. That's all that shit be, my nigga. So, and don't get me wrong. If you the niggas who run a hood, I understand how you may feel if some niggas that ain't even from your hood or niggas that don't put in the same amount of work that you put in the hood is in there glamorizing and filming movies in your hood. I understand that could piss people off. So you always got to know and understand whoever you with, they got to be the type of nigga that they not going to piss off the natives by filming a video out there. You feel what I'm saying? But a lot of times that shit be je a lot of times that shit be hate and jealousy, my nigga. And niggas just be hating on a rapper nigga trying to do his thing and rep his hood. And that shit is disgusting, my nigga. And niggas need to get that hatred out their heart, my nigga. Real talk, cause don't none of us own these brown buildings, nigga. In fact, they own us. So Yeah, man. It was a whole crazy ordeal. Shit was crazy. And you know, in my rating scale of juxism. On the robbery rating scale, I'm gonna rate these dudes' performance. Now, on execution, on execution, how they executed the robbery, I'm gonna give them a 10 out of 10. You understand what I'm saying? They get a 10 out of 10 for the way they executed that robbery, hiding behind that bus and creeping alongside of the bus until the bus got out the way and then, and boom, surprise attack. That was dope. So I'm gonna give them a 10 out of 10 with that uh intimidation factor i'm gonna also give them a 10 out of 10 with the intimidation factor three screen masks with hoodies in the projects tech nine two two good four fifths two nine that was that was intimidating you feel what i'm saying nobody moved nobody played around nobody tried nothing funny that was that was a good uh intimidation tactic so i'm gonna give them like i said again a 10 out of 10 on execution um, I mean on intimidation. Um, safety, juke safety. You understand what I'm saying? The safety of your your fellow juxers and yourself. I'm gonna give y'all a five out of ten. I'm gonna give you a five out of ten because when you collected the stuff off the floor. You turned your back too many times to the people that you was robbing and you put your head down too many times to the people that you was robbing without searching them. And somebody could have had a gun and somebody could have blew your head off. You understand what I'm saying? One of y'all could have lost your life. So I'm going to give y'all, like I said again, a five out of ten on safety. Closing. How y'all close the robbery. How y'all close the robbery out. I'm going to have to give y'all a two out of ten. I have to give y'all two out of ten on that because um after y'all got the jewelry the money whatever it is bro y'all did not have to give a speech and if you did give a speech a quick speech yo nigga don't come out here filming no fucking videos without asking me and keep it moving but the speech because it was a video shoot niggas gave a whole speech in front of an audience in broad daylight with a tech nine in his hand that shit was dangerous to everybody it was dangerous to everybody and it could have ruined the whole robbery. You could have went to jail, got killed, got one of your mans killed, got away with nothing, all because pride and ego to give the speech. So I'm gonna give y'all a two out of 10 for closing of the robbery. You understand what I'm saying? But all together, all together, impressive robbery. You feel what I'm saying? So, so Woodside Queens, we gonna congratulate you on um, 
having some good jux boys out here, man. Good jux boys out here. You understand what I'm saying? Good jux boys. Um, but yeah, man, to the kids out there, to the rappers out there, don't be in nobody projects that you ain't from with a bunch of motherfucking jewelry hanging from your neck, my nigga, because you might lose your life for it. And that's a fact. You heard? Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man running around every hood like He-Man. You heard? Get at me.